You probably spent a fortune on gifts on New Year's Eve, especially when it was Christmas a week before that. How do I know that? Well, Americans on average spend over a thousand dollars on gifts, goodies and travel. That might not look like a fortune, but when you look at the other data that says that 60% of Americans can't cover an expected thousand dollar bill, it gets sad because emergencies happen and they're full of surprises. It might be unexpected doctor visit, your car breaks down, or something else that could prevent you from living your everyday life. There is nothing wrong with buying gifts and having fun. But when our holiday spendings keep going up year after year, while we stop saving and start getting into debts more and more, it starts getting scary. So here in this video, we are going to take a look at where exactly your money should go once you get paid. What steps should you take once you receive that paycheck so that when you are faced with that unexpected thousand dollar bill again, you don't have to get into debt because you've been planning your cash flow pretty well. The first thing that you should do is to have a list of your necessities. What are the things you literally can't live without? Your house, groceries, transport. Whether you like it or not, you have to pay your bills every month. Otherwise, you will end up in the streets. But here is the problem. A lot of people can't differentiate between their needs and wants. Your Starbucks coffee might be important, but it's definitely not a need, but rather a want. The reason why this is important is a lot of people complain that their income is not enough. That's why they are living paycheck to paycheck. I'm not gonna argue against that, you're probably underpaid, maybe not, but that doesn't mean you can't manage your cash flow a bit more effectively at least. Especially if you want to get out of that desperate financial position, you definitely need to be much more responsible with your paycheck. Denying yourself some of the pleasures might be difficult, but at least you know that you aren't going to go broke soon. You don't have to spend every penny in your pocket to make it till the next of the month. Once you're done with that, you should start building your emergency fund. A lot of people would say that you should have at least a thousand dollars or maybe even a few thousand dollars in case if things go south. And they have a point, that makes sense. But I don't like complicating things. Your emergency fund should be your savings fund as well. Before you throw at me your angry comments, let me explain. Here is how it's supposed to work. Once you're done with the first step, you should have a clear idea of how much exactly you need to live decently. Take that amount and multiply it by 6. That's your number. That's how much your emergency fund should have at any point. Of course, you can't build that fund in a month or two. It might take you an entire year to do that, if not longer. There isn't an exact percentage of your income you should allocate to that, because it will highly depend on your income. If you're hardly making enough to make it till the end of the month, you might consider a smaller percentage. If you're making much more than you possibly need, then you probably should build your emergency fund much faster. Maybe you should not be having an emergency fund at all because you're hardly making ends meet. What's the point of saving money when you barely pay your rent? In this case, you should forget about this fund and focus on increasing your income first. It might not be easy, but there are plenty of ways to do that. When you have multiple accounts to save money, it starts consuming a lot of time which means you probably won't stick to it. You will do it once or maybe twice and then you're going to forget about it. That's why I do my best to simplify everything as much as possible. And secondly, there is no point in saving a lot of money. You gotta do something with that money to keep it growing. But let's not get ahead of us. We'll talk about that in a moment. But before you build your emergency fund, make sure to pay your debts first, especially high interest debts. Borrowing money isn't cheap, especially borrowing for short-term periods. I'm a big fan of using credit cards to pay the bills, but only if you know that you can close your balance at the end of the month. That way, you're not just paying your bills, but also building your credit score. However, if you end up paying interest on your debts, then that's insane. Imagine working so hard to make $1000 and then spend 20% of it to cover your credit card interest. I've never paid a diamond credit card interest in my entire life and I would suggest you to do the same. But if you already have high interest debts on your shoulders, before you even save a dime, make sure to pay them all as soon as you can. 
Now, let's move to my favorite part, entertainment. This is the part where you initially plan to spend the least amount of money, but end up splurging most of your income. Come on, be honest about that. How many times did it happen? It happens every single time. No matter how disciplined you think you are going to be, most of you won't be able to spend the entire month without spending on entertainment. It's just part of life. Hanging out with friends, going to a bar at night, or going for a movie with your homies is just part of modern life. Just a little advice, never ever go into debt for entertainment. No matter how badly you want that, borrowing money to have fun is the dumbest financial decision you will ever make. You can somehow justify your student debt, mortgage, rent, or any other necessity, but not entertainment. So for God's sake, do not disappoint me. Let's try to be a little bit more specific. What do we mean by entertainment? I consider entertainment anything else that's not considered as a necessity. That Starbucks coffee, casual eating out with friends, the new hoodie that you have bought but you will never need it. Of course, you can't break down your spending habits into little small parts and micromanage them. From my experience, micromanagement doesn't help unless you are a real nerd. After a few days or maybe even a week, you will just dump your plan and start spending randomly. So, do not underestimate your entertainment spending and set a realistic budget. Invest the rest. Many of you might disagree with me because I'm not making investing the first priority. You might think that it should be on the top of the list. And I'm not gonna disagree with you, you've got a point. But from my experience, I would say, what's the point of investing when you barely cover your necessities? Talking about investing is a lot different than actually putting your money at stake. You invest only when you make enough money after covering your basic bills at least. But enough doesn't mean millions of dollars, not even hundreds of thousands. Once you start making a little bit more than you need to make ends meet and you have some basic savings, you can consider investing. Of course, that might mean working harder or getting a second job or maybe hustling on the side. It's going to be different for everyone. But that's probably the only way. What I would do is focus on building the emergency fund first. Because when you invest your money, it's not always easy to quickly liquidate it in case if things go south. Of course, it depends on the nature of your investment, but you don't want to pull out at the wrong time and make a loss when you intended to grow your money at the first place. Isn't that the purpose of investing? But that doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in yourself. If you spend a single day without learning or growing, that's a day wasted. Because if you're not going to become a better person today than you were yesterday, then what's the point of living that day? So regardless of how big or small your income is, always invest even a tiny portion of that amount in yourself. Get a book on personal finance and learn how to manage your money better. Pick up a course on the stock market and learn how to invest in the stock market. By the way, if you use the link in the description, you will get this amazing course on the stock market for free on Skillshare. But investing doesn't just mean reading books. Going to seminars, meeting new people who are smarter than you is another way to invest in yourself. I would even say that traveling is investing in yourself because it forces you to get out of your comfort zone and think outside the box. And lastly, make sure to invest some of your money in an index fund. Investing in yourself is great. Investing in different stocks is great. But a portion of your investments should be in a low-risk ETF that would grow to a substantial amount in the long run through the power of compounding. You shouldn't touch that amount in any case, because the whole purpose of investing in an ETF is to rip the rewards of compound interest. So even if your individual stocks suffer or your investment in your stuff won't pay enough for one reason or another, you can be confident that you have something to fall on should something chaotic happen. God forbid. But if someone would give you some free stocks, then you probably shouldn't care. Like Webull. Yeah, if you use the link in the description, you can get at least two free stocks. And now it's your turn. How do you spend most of your money? What's your financial plan for 2021? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, give this video the thumbs up that it deserves. And of course, subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching and until next time.